everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this um, really cute gatefold card using supplies from the February Hobby Base kit. Um, uh, if any of you have been watching um, previously, um, I shared uh, what was inside the February kit and I'll share that link to this um, tutorial today. Um, and along with another project that I've done as well, which was a little sweet uh, wrapper gift box. Um, I'll be doing four tutorials a month, um, one every week, just showing you what you can make from the uh, kit that you receive, if you choose to receive it. And again, I'll share all the links for how you can do that if you like it. So this is the gatefold card. So it basically just opens up like so, and then you can write your message below there. Um, this is using this gorgeous little birdcage die which I've used in previous um, tutorials. Again I'll share those links as well because it's a really cute little gift box that I used for that one. And then I've heat embossed here and then you've got that lovely sentiment which I said I really liked and it says love you. It's quite subtle but I think it's nice. You may not pick it up so well here but you can see it really well in real life. Um, I folded over the tops here and just raised it up with some sticky back foam um, tabs there as well. And then we just got a little bit of ribbon. This has been heat embossed um, three times to give the look of metal. So it's a bird cage, so you've got a metal effect there. And um, I just think that looks really, really sweet. And then it's lined with um, the papers that you receive and the papers on top here as well. So that's what we're gonna make. I've also just done a little bit of heat embossing on the um, bottom of the envelope there as well, because I just think that looks quite nice. And that's using, again, some more of the stamps. So to make this card, let's just pop that to one side. I've got all my bits and pieces here. So let me just get all this out of the way. So this is the ribbon. So for anybody that's not seen the um, tutorial or the video, sorry, where I showed what was inside, this is um, one of the products and this has got hearts all around it. It's two metres of ribbon and I've used it already for the project that I mentioned before, the sweet um, wrapper uh, project and obviously on this one as well. And I mean, it's two metres, so it's a lot. I've already done my envelope because when I show you some other heat embossing in a minute, you'll know what to do with that. So I didn't think you need to see me do that again. Okay, so these are all the bits and pieces. This is the stamp set. You get 15 stamps, so it's really nice. And again, it's not, I know this is a Valentine's themed box. Obviously the month of February, we've got Valentine's Day, but there are certainly ones here that you can use all year round. We always tell people we love them, not just on Valentine's Day. And um, yeah, I mean, the hugs and kisses, forever yours. You've got the little bug here, especially for you. That's just a nice one, even for a birthday. And you've got this lovely corner one here. So, you know, you can use these in, um, in other ways as well. So that's the stamp set. Okay, so this is the, you get three card bases um, in every kit and um, obviously you get all papers as well. You get 10 sheets of this six by six pattern paper in all different designs. Um, if you don't have a um, card base like gatefold, which is how this one came, then you can just cut one down. So all you need is a piece of 12 by 12 card cut it so it's 12 by 6 and then along the 12 inch side you want to score at 3 and at 9 okay and that will give you this gatefold card so in the middle this is 6 by 6 and then these are 3 by 6 so when they fold over they all join up like a little gate okay so to get that folded effect which I've done here all you want to do is just grab a ruler and just along the side here you just want to mark at three inches. Okay, so just put a little bit of a marker there. I'm not going to do it because I know what I'm doing and um, I don't want to have to rub it out afterwards, but just put a tiny little light marker there and then you can just rub that out. If you don't want to do that, all you can do is just bring this over and just keep your finger and your nail or something just there so you get a really nice join and just line it up and then bring it all down like so. Okay, and then you can just score that down, use your bone folder, and then you will get that lovely effect. Okay, like so. So now what I need to do is put some foam, sticky foam tabs underneath this. So I think I've done three on each one, so just do a couple there. You don't have to do this if you, you haven't got the foam um, tape. You don't get um, the foam tabs, sorry, you don't get these in the kit. Um, but you can just put glue them down or you could even leave them 
um, just just kind of um, folded down. So it's entirely up to you to have a play around. That's what it's all about. And then I pop another one like so. And then just remove all the backings. Okay. And again, you can't, probably can't pick it up too well in the video, but it does just give it a little bit more something, you know, just lift it up like that, it looks quite nice. Okay, so that's that piece done. Then you will have this piece, which is gonna go in the middle here. Now this needs, you need to trim it down. It's a six by six piece, but you wanna trim it down to five and three quarters by five and three quarters. That way, when you sit it in, you'll just get a really nice little frame around the outside. Okay, now again, I went ahead and heat embossed this piece. I am gonna show you how to heat emboss the um, birdcage when we get to it. But again, what I've done here um, is I've done this before I stick it down because when we heat emboss um, and we apply the heat, sometimes the paper can get a bit warped. So it's best to do this before. I've already put my sticky tape on the back, backing tape, so that when I stick it down, if it has warped, it's hard to really see it here, but it is a little bit curved. It was gonna completely flatten out now when I stick it onto the back of that card. But all I've done here is I used the long sentiment, the love you one, which again, let me just find, where did I put it? So it's this one here, okay? Just along the top, and then I do the three hearts. Now what you want to do is when you put it in, so kind of line it up with the border just as best as you can. Fold your sides down like so, with a pencil, very lightly, just draw up and down like so. That way you know that whatever you're stamping has to be within that triangle. So if you're using the stamp positioner, um, or just your acrylic blocks when you put it down, this can, could you know, obstruct you doing that. So it's best to do it, just draw a pencil like I've done there, and then you can put that all where you need to, okay? So I can rub that out in a minute. Now I can go ahead and get that stuck down onto my card base. Okay, so like I said, just make sure you get a nice border. Like so and then I'll rub all that out in a minute. Okay, so that's that piece now all in place. Now we need to decorate the front. So you need to cut two squares, need to be two and three quarters by two and three quarters, and these are gonna sit nicely at the bottom here. And then you need one piece, which is gonna be two and five eighths of an inch by two and five eighths of an inch. Now this piece, you're just gonna cut in half. So again, I've already put my tape on the back. If you're using tape like I am, double-sided, then it's best to put the tape down first, and then when we cut it, it's all in place, because it'll be a triangle shape, it's a bit fiddly to put the tape onto that shape. But if you're using any of those like little um, uh, roller glues and uh, just wet glue, then you can do it again after as well. But again, what you wanna do is you can draw a pencil mark from corner to corner, okay? I'm just gonna cut this, because I've got big, long scissors here. So just start really neatly at one end and you just want to go all the way across to the other. Okay. So now we can get those all stuck down in place. So the bottom two, make sure you're happy with the positioning. Again, you should have a nice even border on all four sides. So I'm going to get those two stuck okay, down. So that's those two stuck down. And then just the same with those two triangles are going to go in there and they will have the same border as the square does below and again because I've already stuck that backing on it means that I've got a nice coverage with the glue and it goes right up to the corners there so um, yeah if you're ever like I said using what I use the double-sided tape rolls always stick it all first and then cut after Okay, so just stick these okay, two down. So that's all stuck down. Another rule of thumb that I've mentioned before in, in tutorials is if whenever you've got lots of pattern papers and the colours match but maybe the prints don't, generally anything that's got stripes or spots will go with a floral design. So you can see here this has got the stripes and the spots and it does work with this floral. So if that was just a polka dot paper, it would work with this. And again, if it was just lines, it would work as well. So it's just, you know, just to kind of help you there if you do ever struggle um, matching up papers. Okay, so now that's all done. So the card's pretty much there. We just need to finish off the decoration. So we're gonna now do this really cute little bird cage. So what I went ahead and done already was die cut two of the bird cages just on white card, and then I've stuck them on top of each other. So now, 
you can hear I've got a nice harder like almost like a chipboard die cut there okay and that's just to raise it up it's again hard to pick up here but that that's really it's not kind of you know it's not flimsy it's hard I can open the card with the birdcage alone and it doesn't bend so it's just just giving your cards that you know that bit more of a quality feel to them so I tend to always do that with my die cuts so I've die cut two there and then I'm going to die cut another one with you now and that's the one that we're going to be doing the heat bossing on um, so I've already got one here so I'm just going to pop that on my card I've just got a piece of card over the top there just to make sure I get a really nice cut Okay, so I've just run that through a few times just so I made sure, because this is a thick card that I've got here as well. So I just wanted to make sure, but you can see these all just fall out. It's uh, it's a lovely die. So that's all run, been run through the um, die machine. So now what we need to do is with the, so this is the sh paper I've been using, with the Versamark that comes in the kit, you basically I find if you hold the end here, because you're not actually going to see this because it's covered with the bow, so it doesn't matter if you don't get this covered with a Versamark, you can keep it white. It just gives you something to hold on to when we're going to heat emboss, but you can also use tweezers as well. So all you want to do is just go over and just make sure you cover your die in the Versamark. I can see with the, the lamp there hitting against it, I can see that that's covered already. Okay, and then we're going to use the Wow um, Champers embossing powder again, comes with the kit. And I'm going to be doing this three times, so that's what gives you that metal look, is by doing layer upon layer. So we're going to do this first. Okay, tap off your excess. I'm just going to move that slightly out of view for the minute because I don't want to blow it all off with my heat gun. Key thing with the heat gun, make sure it heats up really hot first before you apply it to whatever it is that you want to set. Okay. Okay, so if I just hold that up, I don't know how well we can see this. Just about, I think. There we go, you can just kind of catch it there. That's just with one layer, and you get a really nice coverage. But again, like I said, I want to layer it up even more. Now, if you want to keep it like that, that's fine. You don't have to do it three times. It's, you know, it's up to you what look you want to go for. So now that's, again, been done. Let it cool, give it a few, kind of, give it like 30 seconds or so, just to um, kind of set and cool down before you apply again. So then, with the Versamark, I'm just going to go right over again, like so. making sure I don't get this powder mixed into this spot on the paper here. Usually I would use two separate pieces, but it's just because I'm doing the video here. So again, I'm just going to pick that up and with my powder, just literally shake it all over again and then set that with my heat gun. And I'm going to repeat that again after. Okay, so in total, I would have done it three times. Okay, so there you have it. That is three layers of embossing powder. And now that looks like a metal effect um, die cut so it gives it yeah, completely changes the look of your dies it's really nice that one okay hopefully you can see what I've done there you'll be able to pick it up in the pictures as well okay so now we just need to stick that on top of this one here so I'm just using some glue any glue will work as long as it obviously sticks it I'm just putting a little bit on the bird some along the bottom there and along that other piece and along the top the ribbon's going to obviously keep that together. You can put a little bit on the very outside ones, just obviously just to keep them kind of in place. But you don't need to worry too much, like so. And then just sit that down over the top. So now I have a really strong, you can hear it when it kind of drops down, it's a really strong, nice little embellishment. Decoration, so that is now going to go in the middle like so. So all we need to do is apply some ribbon. So or we'll add ribbon. Sometimes I use really weird words. Those of you that follow me probably think sometimes what is she saying? I don't it's hard, I don't think about what I'm saying. Obviously I'm concentrating on what I'm doing so I do speak gibberish sometimes when I watch back my videos I think oh my gosh. 
Okay, so I can't remember how much I used for this, so I'm going to cut off. I'm going to cut off eight inches, but I don't think you're going to need all of that. So pop it through the loop, and then just tie itself in a nice. So eight inches was actually just right. If not, I could have probably gone more. So I'm going to say you go for ten, because anyone who struggles with bows like me, you'll need that extra to be able to actually tie the bow. But there you go, I'm happy with that. And then all you wanna do is stick one half of the birdcage to the left-hand side of the card. So the very middle straight line that goes through the birdcage, you don't wanna stick at all, but everything to the left of that you do. So I'm just gonna flip it over so now it's this right-hand side. And mainly I'm just gonna focus on the bird again and just pop glue there and then on these again, like so. Just on the backs. It's just to kind of, you know, just keep it in place really. Most people will open it up with the main bit of card and not this. Then lie it down and with that dead straight one that I said about going through the middle of the bird cage, line that up with the two of these, this middle of it. Okay, so keep that lined up. The bottom of the bird cage you want to line up with the bottom of your papers. And then just stick that and on. And there down. you have it, a really cute gatefold card. So now that one opens up, it all looks lovely, and you've got plenty of room to write your sentiment there. And it just folds back, and obviously it all stands up nicely. So that's the one I've done with its matching envelope there. And then that's the other one I've done again with the matching envelope. So that is using one, two, three, four of the papers, and then I used two for the sweet wrapper gift boxes that I used. So I've still got four pieces of the paper left and I've already made some really nice projects. And those gift boxes would actually go really nice with these cards. So again, there's, there's just so much you can get out of this kit each month. So I hope I've inspired you, hope you enjoy it. And it's a nice one for you to follow even if you don't have the kits. And um, yeah, hope you uh, enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up if you did and subscribe to the channel to see more. Thanks for watching, bye.